Well, good morning. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. My name is Robert. I'm happy to have you joining us here. For the last couple of days and for the, the next few days, we'll be working through the Ten Commandments in the book of Exodus. As we look at uh, these instructions that God gave his people as a, an early guidance to how to navigate life in the world around us, and these are still things that are, are central to the Christian faith. But I think along the way, sometimes we have uh, misunderstood the nature of them and sometimes even uh, some of the specific commands. So if you're new to this concept and maybe haven't been watching, let me remind you of, of a concept that I heard many years ago, that the Ten Commandments are here more as guardrails to keep us from experiencing harm and, and damage and danger in life more than they are mandates to keep us from having fun. Uh, especially from my years working with teenagers, sometimes they read the, the instructions and commands of God thinking that, oh, your God just doesn't want me to have fun and doesn't want me to experience life. When in reality, these, these are placed as guardrails to keep us from driving our life off of that proverbial cliff. And, and so these, these Ten Commandments are here to help us uh, avoid experiencing damage and harm and, and destroying our life, either spiritually or even relationally and physically. And so we've worked through some of these commandments already, and we're going to be looking at, at, at uh, Exodus chapter 20 at the third command, but we've seen the first ones that we're to have no other gods before the one and true God, but also that we're to have no idols. And then we get to the third one here in verse 7 of Exodus 20, and that is that you shall not take the Lord, the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Now, I grew up hearing this and grew up hearing the threats that I was to not use particular curse words or phrases of cursing that included the name God or Jesus in them. And even at some points in my past was threatened to not use the phrase, oh my God, because that was the worst thing. And even to say OMG was incredibly detrimental. Now, I think all of those are valid things. And if we're using those flippantly or, or in a matter of cursing, then, then that's uh, certainly going against that command. But it's much more than that. It's much more than the words we speak and, and how we flippantly use phrases. Uh, because when we look at the original uh, word there of what does it mean to use it in vain? It means to make something empty or worthless or meaningless and, and insignificant. So it's much less simply about the words we speak, although that is something to pay attention to, but it also includes how we handle the res and respect the name of God and his reputation. How do we either harm or build up the name and reputation of the Lord that we serve? And so besides our, our cursing and with our words, here's a few examples that I think uh, may uh, point to a situation where we may use the, the name of the Lord in vain. And the first example that I have is, is when we twist a Bible passage, we take it out of context or, or we ignore certain parts or we manipulate it to communicate a preference that we have, or maybe even worse, we justify our own sinful actions or behaviors. That's using the name of the Lord in vain. If we're using the, the words of God himself uh, for our own motives and our own goals. Another way we do this is by uh, hearing or, or saying statements rather, well, God wants this to happen. When the what in that sentence isn't something clearly communicated in scripture. I've heard people say, well, God wants this political candidate to win this election, or God wants this sports team to win this game. And unfortunately, neither one of those are clearly articulated in scripture and that's us saying that we know the exact mind of God in a situation that we may not. And I think that's using the name of the Lord in vain. Another example is when we profess to be Christians and, and we go around saying, I believe in Jesus, I believe in the name of, uh, of God, and we leave church or we leave a, a setting and we live completely in uh, competition to the instructions of God. When we live a life that's full of sin, that's unrepentant, and we live contrary to the lifestyle that God has called us to while professing to be a Christian, that's a way of taking the Lord's name in vain. Another example here is when we use our, our status of faith, we use the name of God, or we use the fact, oh, I'm a Christian for our own personal gains. Maybe we say, hey, if I, if I say I'm a Christian, I'll get you know, a better chance at this job or this opportunity or, or people will think high, more highly of me. And the only motivation is for our own personal gain. That's using the name of the Lord in vain. Now, I could keep going with lists, but, but my goal in, in giving you some of these examples is to say, hey, it's more than just the words that we speak. And, and we certainly need to be careful that we're not cursing using the Lord's name or cursing in general for that matter. 
But more than that, we need to be looking at how are we stewarding the, our role of God's reputation and his name to those around us. Are we making the name of Jesus more important and more significant and more interesting to the ones around us? Or are we making it more uh, ugly? Are we, are we making the name of Jesus more uh, frustrating and, and bitter because of how we're living our life? Because that's really what God's getting at here with how we use his name. Are we building him up? Are we promoting and, and, and building up the name and reputation of God? Or are we dragging it into the mud with our own life and choices? So I hope that clarifies for you. I hope that in some ways that helps you see some areas where you can help build up the name of God in your own circles and in your own life so that we can all better live with these guardrails that God has given us. Have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.